Welcome back to Vision 2030. And those of you who have just joined us, uh, joined us. my name is Anam Chowdhury. I'm uh, here with our special guest. We've got Councillor Saeed Akhtun, the Deputy Leader of Central Council. We also have Dr. Hussein, who is the faculty member at the Birmingham uh, City University. And we have Reverend Chris Allen, uh, the founder of uh, Compass Community Partnership. So uh, we were talking about uh, um, earlier about the the earlier um, uh, development of our community and the population, how we emerged uh, from 6,000 to over half a million uh, communities. But what we want to talk about here um, now is specifically about the, the Casey report, Chris. And uh, in 2015, and Dame Lewis Casey was asked by the Prime Minister and the Home Secretary to um, undertake a review uh, of into integration and also the opportunities in isolated and deprived communities. The integration the uh, Dame um, Chasey, uh, Casey was looking at was not uh, just about how well we are doing individually as a community but also looking at uh, comparing the communities with other other uh, groups in the country. Um, but. Um, uh, but I've read the report, and I'm sure, uh, Chris, you've, you've got de uh, in-depth knowledge about the re report, and you've studied, uh, studied it uh, uh, deeply. Uh, do you want to tell us uh, about uh, how, what, what, you, what, you, what the report has found, and also, um, you know, what's the what's the message for our community really in the report? Certainly, I, like, I, I wouldn't say I've studied the whole, all 199 pages in great depth, but yes, and 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 the report um, is is very valuable, I think, because it. And, and the way uh, that Louise Casey writes is very f firm and, and doesn't sort of brush things under the carpet. Mm -hmm. I think that, that approach has been really helpful as well. There's also uh, annex within the report, uh, lots of previous work, which I think is also valuable. And, and there's a, there's a, there's a, a great um, extent of, of research that's included there too. What began to stand out to me, and I've just summarised you know, into perhaps a, f a few lines from 199 pages. Mm -hmm. First of all, everyone recognised there was a problem. It's not that everybody is sort of saying, oh, everything's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Everybody recognised there is a problem, there is something to be done. And social cohesion and equality don't just happen. Mm -hmm. You have to work really hard at it okay. uh, and you have to put money to it. It mm -hmm. doesn't just happen automatically. Um, there's a need for leaders uh, and different initiatives to take things forward. Again, a part of things don't just happen. And with the current situation, we find that, that it's been exploited by extremists and the far right as well. So that's another motivation mm -hmm. to try to make things change. It's an opportune moment mm -hmm. to actually try to move things forward. Mm -hmm. Com communities that live separately uh, with less integration um, Things such as mistrust and anxiety and prejudice builds up because people don't know each other. People mm -hmm. don't cross those barriers in order to get to know each other. And um, those of a Bangladeshi ethnicity tend to live in segregated communities. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there will be more mistrust, will be more anxiety, there will be more prejudice mm -hmm. because of that lack of inter interaction with other areas of well, as well. 28%, and you referred to some of these statistics earlier, 28% of the Bangladeshi population live in the most... Ten, uh, the, uh, in the worst 10% of communities as well. So therefore, there's a lot of deprivation um, associated with the community. And 99% live in an urban area, you know, mm. and mainly London, Birmingham and Manchester. So again, it's, it's associated particularly with urban areas. There's also a lot less mobility amongst the Bangladeshi community than there is amongst white groups. And what that then impacts it on is there's a, there's a lower aspiration, uh, there's less opportunity to move and make the most of yourself and mm -hmm. realizing that. Mm -hmm. I think it is changing from, from people I talk to, but I think that's still embedded within there, that there needs to be more mobility, less, uh, less isolation in order to move forward and achieve, what, achieve the potential of, mm -hmm. of the community. Um, Bangladeshi community is three times more likely to be unemployed than the white population. Uh, twice the level of reported prejudice at interviews comes from the Bangladeshi and Pakistani community compared with white interviewees. And this, is a, this one stood out to me uh, as a big statistic here. 51% um, are on low income if the head of the household is Bangladeshi. Okay. That's a big. That's a big number. That's so you know. That's that's the majority mm -hmm. of households are suffering economically if the head of the household is Bangladeshi. One earner. One earner as as the main as the main earner. Yeah. Um, there's the highest tax credit households. There's the lowest levels of English language proficiency. 
And and again, this stood out, stood out to me that the Bangladeshi community are most likely not to have used the internet. 10.7%, okay. and that's the highest of all the ethnic groups. 10.7% are likely not to have used the uh, the internet, and that has a massive impact then on isolation, access to works, access to opportunities as well. Um, in terms of the more on the integration side of it, then 50% of the population uh, are in schools where there is a majority of a, a minor, minority ethnic group. Yes. That's very hard to say that, but you know what I mean. That yes. again, there's a, there's a lack of uh, uh, of integration, and what what that lack of integration leads to is a limited labour market, uh, reduction in social ties, a lower identification with Britain. You know, okay. and what it means to be British, okay. and also level, lower levels of trust as well. And perhaps the last thing I'd like to say, just, just for now, because we can broaden this out, that I, and I'm, I'm repeating what you said at the beginning of the programme with regard to, to women, mm -hmm. and that is 57% of 16 to 64-year-olds mm -hmm. are economically inactive. Active. And that compares to 25% of the white population and 38% of other ethnic minorities. So it is massively ahead Mm -hmm. of other of other groups how it compares and also the other statistic that links in with that is that 43.8 percent do not speak English well and that's well ahead of other ethnic minorities mm -hmm. yeah. and men are 19.6 percent so not quite the biggest issue mm -hmm. uh, um, but that's there and also women perhaps are also restricted in in some aspects through their own religious traditions and mm -hmm. the culture within there, there as well. Um, I wanted to go back as well, because uh, one of the things I've noticed from the report that 46% of British Muslims say that being a Muslim in Britain is difficult mm -hmm. due to prejudice against Islam. Okay. Um, and, and, but I wanted to go back to the positive aspects of faith communities. And I know from my experience of working with many churches and hearing the stories of how mosques develop and actually seeing mosques and churches working together yeah. in key areas. Uh, and I'm aware of projects in Sparkbrook in Birmingham where there's a real integration between uh, mosques and churches to support the community and the needs of the community. That faith communities lie at the heart of a lot of the development that happens in all our communities now. Uh, and, and that 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 is a, a key element to build on, and I think it's one of the places by which we start to say how do we move forward is actually we w look what's in the community already in terms of co social cohesion and try to develop from there. That's very interesting Chris and there's a lot of new uh, numbers and information that uh, uh, that's within the report. I just want to remind our viewers if you can also take part in this discussion so there is a number on the screen do uh, give us a call um, and take part in the discussion. Um, Dr. Hussein, uh, thank you very much, Chris, for, for that. Uh, Dr. Hussein, the report indicates that we are not doing very well. Um, why, that, why is that? First of all, I think uh, our gener new, the older generation, they didn't quite think about going out into education, training, mm -hmm. jobs. They came here, they wanted to earn some money, mm -hmm. and they left their children at home or they sent their children to school. They didn't know exactly what was happening. Mm -hmm. I remember from my uh, younger days that uh, a child, 14, 15, they start working in the kitchen of the restaurant, mm -hmm. get 40, 50 pounds a week, mm -hmm. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And when he's 16, he's getting 80 pounds or something. Both children and the parents think there's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So they used to think that I've got a lot of money. Now, if I get 100 pounds a week, mm -hmm. as opposed to 10,000, 12,000 pounds a week, if I have done proper schooling and a degree or pro other things, I can go, at that time, I could have gone up to 15, 20,000 pounds a year, mm -hmm. which is a lot more than 100 or 50 pounds a week. Cool. So that has digressed the people from going into mainstream earning, both okay. our parental type of people and ourselves who were young at that time, mm -hmm. took that decision. And then restaurant was the only way. Okay. Now, restaurant is not the only thing. Um, many youngsters who grew up with me, mm -hmm. they think we want to go out of restaurant business now. We want to do something. A bit stuck. I've mm -hmm. got lots of students in the community. They are uh, studying for competence-based education and training where we can give them some competences, building their own experiences mm -hmm. of management or running the businesses as a restaurant owner or worker. They can go into other businesses, other things, which I'm trying to build up. So what you're trying to say is that we need to uh, change the culture of thinking in Learning. terms of more, more into education and more into mainstream skills that we need to go into rather than focus on low skills employment. Yes, exactly. So I think once we change that culture, then we'll be able to better ourselves. We need to have in the forefront that earning 100 pound a week is not 
20,000 pound a year. Mm -hmm. Now we can earn more money, mm -hmm. 30,000, 40,000. And uh, if you are skilled labor, if you're a skilled manager, mm -hmm. you can go from, even if you can work for ASDA, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of opportunities. So perhaps also the opportunities you're talking about, that we, uh, our community is not aware of those opportunities uh, that are available, and therefore we are behind on taking up those opportunities. Uh, Councillor Khatun, um, thank you very much, Dr. Hussain, for that. Uh, Councillor Khatun, the report highlights, as Chris said, 58% of Bangladeshi women are not uh, participating in the labor market. Uh, there is a significant, also, uh, our community has the lowest level of English language proficiency, especially within the women's group. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, w why, how can we, why is that? I mean, what are the barriers for, for women to go into employment? I, I would say that it started off with uh, this cultural, as Chris says, cultural ties where traditionally women didn't work mm -hmm. and men were seen as the breadwinner mm -hmm. of the, the family. And um, sometimes, you know, if a man's wife did work, he'd mm -hmm. be, uh, his friends would say, well, why are you sending your wife out to work? Mm -hmm. um, but the other the reason is women were the main source of carers. They looked after their children, they mm -hmm. looked after their in-laws when they're older. So again, you know, being the carer, it prevented them from working. But they, you know, nowadays I don't think that stops you because um, you know being a carer doesn't mean that you, you don't have to do full-time work you can mm -hmm. go into part-time work and um, people can also study um, you don't have to go to university you can study online mm -hmm. at home so through the new sort of networks there's also the um, you know the modern apprenticeship routes yes. the bursaries you know if you want to become a social worker you get in a, a bursary 19,000 pounds to pay for your child care and your expenses while you train up in an 18 months you could become a social worker so there are opportunities out there I don't think women have explored those and um, the w there hasn't been a traditional uh, industry for Bangladeshi women to go into mm -hmm. for men it was the curry industry or taxis or whatever they're doing now for women there hasn't been a, a role models out okay. there saying oh that's something we can do mm -hmm. so women are now looking at what kind of work they can do and, and I do know that the girls at school and education are doing better than Bangladeshi boys. So I think, you know, in years to come, mm -hmm. if they take it on, women take the lead, I think that we're beating the men in terms of profession. profession. I've got so. ambitions and, and, you know, so this, this, ter this could turn. You know, it, from negative to a positive. positive it's yeah. about people becoming leaders and empowerment. Do you, do you have, uh, sorry to uh, cut over, uh, you, uh, do you have um, a demand from the Bangladeshi women uh, in your centre that you work uh, for them to go into? Yeah, they do employment? come, but as I said, the childcare and all that becomes a barrier. But what they're saying is they want part time work and they're still looking at the the traditional sort of, oh, can we be a supervisory dinner lady or a care worker mm -hmm. and things like that? Or working in retail store, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, if you have to, that's a job and it pays. And it, it's an income and it does, it does still raise aspirations. If you're working, your kids will see you working. So, um, but you know, the younger generation, what we say is um, are coming and they do want to get themselves educated and they want mm -hmm. to, do, they, they, they're going into the degrees. Um, you know, one young girl, she's just uh, passed an interview. She's gonna be a probation officer Okay. in prison and okay. for a Bangladeshi female I thought that was a great achievement, that's, that's great achievement. and stuff like that so there is uh, ambitions out there you know lawyers doctors I, I think with the the, the Brexit and um, the the migration from the European countries which they're saying you know they're not going to be able to come here as freely as they they were mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of uh, medical sort of profession and mm -hmm. a shortage of nurses and doctors and I think that you know that's a kind of tradition that Bangladeshi women haven't looked into and they should be looking if they've got those skills and that women have a lot of skills mm -hmm that they don't know about or they've, they have, as I said, lack of role models. And I think, you know, it's for people and it's also for the families to encourage. Mm -hmm. I think the husbands, the wives, you know, uh, sorry, the husbands, the in-laws, I think they should encourage women a bit more and say, look, you can do things. Mm -hmm. You can well, actually yeah, get just gonna, I think, I think it goes, a lot of this also goes back to confidence mm -hmm. and those you can do it kind of stuff and, and as Dr. Sam was saying earlier really, it's, it's opening up those possibilities, those aspirations, but in many communities and, and um, Bangladesh community would be no different, especially given that, that many of the, of the Bangladesh communities are within more deprived areas. There is that lack of aspiration, mm. but also people don't believe they can do it. They, mm. they, 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 they actually have stereotyped themselves almost into mm. thinking, this is beyond me, I'm not clever enough, I'm not capable of, of mm. doing it. So it starts a lot further back, I think, in, in, in trying to help people have, have confidence in themselves, mm -hmm. have confidence in their community. Some people in communities, they, they put up with 
stuff that other people in other communities wouldn't put up with in terms mm. of crime, antisocial behaviour, different aspects. And that again comes back to this, have we, are we confident as people? Have we got the confidence to, to, to move forward? Have we got those aspirations? So I think a lot of it comes back to putting that in there. And it would be horrible, um, and I know, I know we're not trying to do it, but I think we need to make clear, and, and, and Councillor Couture was, was emphasising that, that there are people who do very good jobs out there at the moment mm -hmm. and we wouldn't want to put down the family values mm -hmm. that women are caught up in. What he's saying is, mm -hmm. you know, have if people want to do something else, have they got the confidence to do it? Mm -hmm. Are they being given the opportunity to do it and the support? Mm -hmm. And so that people have the choices before them because at the moment it would appear that those choices are not there for oh, the majority. Quite limited. Mm -hmm. yeah, quite limited. And, and, and because of the reason that we're leaving deprived areas a significant number. Dr. I think saying, what, what has what happened is uh, people, older people, like my mother's age or someone, it will be difficult for them to come out and go for jobs, <laughs> improve their English. Mm -hmm. Maybe there has to be some way of teaching them at home, mm -hmm. but uh, we need to focus on the new generation, uh, improve their English, mm -hmm. and there are possibilities of, uh, you can be a lawyer without actually, without actually doing the de degree LLB. Mm -hmm. You can be accountant mm -hmm. by slower route but uh, you can do modular uh, qualifications which mm -hmm. uh, and I remember in the 90s uh, I went to uh, do the NVQs for the you know, Heartlands Hospital mm -hmm. and <coughs> the um, nurses have been working there for 30 years no qualification they have been working in the intensive care unit no qualification so what I did was made up qualifications in terms of level one two and three mm -hmm. and the CEO of the hospital wanted them to go forward Mm -hmm. You have been made a manager. She is a midwife. You are a manager of the doctors. Now she had to go forward. So if you are given the given the pressure, mm -hmm. then obviously you'll move forward. Mm -hmm. And we need to f talk about these vocational qualification yeah. competencies. I mean, we talked about like uh, e you know English, lack of English, and a uh, high percentage of women don't speak English. That's because of the the you know they haven't been they've been isolated. They don't go out. They don't socialize. And if they do, it's only within their family or friends, but not with the other communities. Mm. And you've talked about people the mistrust. It's about knowing well you know if you can't communicate without communication, that is the key to that sort of the rest of the mm. the activities that you can get on and I think um, you know we talked about the industry for men they could go into the core industry and that they could walk in talk in their own language work in the kitchen uh, in the sink and work the way up and then become a chef with the women that isn't there isn't that kind of a traditional trade they can go in without an interview so they have to be you know they have to be skilled enough to go and give an interview first yeah. make an application and then make sure that they're successful shortlisted for an interview because there aren't jobs that they could just walk into yeah. the sewing fact factories and the machinists, that kind of jobs yeah. have gone away, they, they, they don't exist but, as much. But they could no, do these uh, courses like in accountancy, bookkeeping, that kind of mm. thing, they could yeah. study not at saying home. We talked about the language yeah. barriers, yeah. didn't yeah, we? We said those who haven't got the language are going to have, problems. they haven't got the, dif they've got difficulties in uh, what kind of jobs yeah, they I think once we, uh, once we realise what our barriers are, barriers are are, mm -hmm. then I think we'll be able to then address them. And I think you talked about the barriers in terms of lack of opportunities. There isn't, um, we, a, a lot of uh, the, the Bengali community are not aware of the opportunities yes. that are out there. And also d don't have the drive to go the out. Drive. Drive. So somebody it's about to drag them exactly. out. It's the confidence, it's, it's it is the confidence. The and somebody women, has to drag them out. Yeah, the yeah. women I see that come in uh, will come to our community center because it's open doors, mm -hmm. there's no, no barriers to stop them. Mm -hmm. And they do want to, they, do, they come in and they really want to work. You know, mm -hmm. they generally say, "What kind? Do you think I could work?" And I say, of course you can work. You mm -hmm. know, why not? And um, they, they don't know what they've got themselves. It's mm -hmm. about exploring within s themselves the skills that they have. Mm -hmm. They budget. They go shopping. They they look after families. They're looking after families with elderly, you know, disability mm -hmm. illnesses. You know, having to look after their health and stuff, and in terms of feeding them the so proper balanced diet. So there's a lot of informal diet. hard work yeah. that yeah. they yeah. do yeah. without yeah. great values yeah. as well that yeah. drive it. Mm -hmm. One thing I can feel that uh, our people, they haven't gone into industrial manufacturing sector. Mm -hmm. If we had done that, then mm -hmm. we could employ our ladies at the mm -hmm. manufacturing, dressmaking. There is very, there isn't a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. now. No, if we, if we, know, if there, there, there are opportunities. Yeah. I mean, uh, there, there's still manufacturing going on. And this is something we haven't looked into very yeah. much. Mm -hmm. That could be developed. Another thing I thought for our youngster was this uh, cricket, international cricket, mm -hmm. going into uh, and if when I was young, before I came here, it was my ambition to play for Pakistan by when I was 20. 
So I had that ambition. I wanted to play football, not only education. I wanted to have a PhD and become a professor. Mm -hmm. That was there, but apart from that, I had this thing. Mm -hmm. But in our time, there was no money. <laughs> No money, yeah. uh, you don't get 500 pound a, a day playing cricket or anything. But now there is an opportunity. opportunity and I can see a lot of people, uh, you know, I'm, I'm quite old and when I play cricket, I have got a style. Mm -hmm. But uh, the people, youngsters, they, they're interested in playing cricket, but they don't have the style. Yes. So there is an opportunity to uh, teach them, take them through. Yeah. Just, Chris, sorry. just on, on going back to the Casey report again uh, around the um, segregated communities. Um, which, which is not just the Bangladeshi community does that, and uh, and, I, and I, I was giving some thought around that. That people need to feel safe. You know, mm -hmm. where we need to feel safe. Home is where you need to feel safe. Mm -hmm. And I think there's an element here by which you've got a bit of a catch twenty two. It goes round and round and round, whereby people segregate themselves because they need to feel safe. But mm -hmm. actually, when you do that, then it, it creates mistrust and anxiety mm -hmm. uh, that then stops you then integrating more around you because mm -hmm. of that. And somehow that there needs to be that breaking of that cycle whereby people quite rightly want their homes and where they are to be to be a place of safety where they feel comfortable uh, where people you know feel quite natural in, the, in, in there but also have places by which their aspiration can be, can be developed beyond mm -hmm. there uh, um, so there is that those two things that go together sometimes because one feeds the other and that's where I think we've got to mm -hmm. in terms of um, isolated communities which mm -hmm. lead to you know loneliness and all the other aspects of an isolated mm -hmm. community as well as other aspects of, of a lack of economic growth within those communities mm -hmm. too but that people we all, we all want to feel safe there's nothing wrong in, in that yeah. but sometimes we, we we feel the only place we can feel safe is just in this very so narrow, narrow how yeah, much how aspect. much of I mean you know the statistics tell uh, tells us that 28% uh, of our uh, community lives in 10% of the most deprived areas. Yeah. Uh, by the fact that we live in uh, a significant number lives in a deprived area, does that have some sort of uh, uh, association with us being deprived? You know, I think I think it, it, well, it does because you contribute towards the statistics of that area. Mm -hmm. But it might also be we you know the whole the, the, the report recommends later on looking at, at, at housing and, and allocation of housing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because again one one thing lead, leads to another mm -hmm. but it's the same within many disadvantaged communities there is a lack of confidence there is a lack of aspiration mm -hmm. there is a lack of vision you know mm -hmm. which is why I think that this title is so good mm -hmm. um, in moving forward and it is trying to say you know what what is the vision that we move towards but it is raising people's hopes that are there uh, without making them another false dawn you know that's, okay. that's, that's what our job thank is thank you very much thank you dr. Uh, Hussein Te uh, thank you uh, Chris for uh, a, a detailed discussion on this uh, because what we're trying to do is establish you know what are the barriers to our uh, communities development and in this segment I think we've covered a lot of those barriers so we now have to uh, go for a short break uh, but we will be back uh, please join us again and uh, we will be talking about uh, the development priorities for our community we've looked at the uh, our community's growth we looked at looked at the issues and, and, and barriers now what we'll be looking at once we come back from the uh, break is the priorities for our community so uh, join us back please thank you